Welcome to Wine Wanderings. Today we have Jean-Charles Boisset and we're sitting here in this lovely setting at Raymond Vineyards um, in Napa Valley. And I had a question for Jean-Charles and it was, what was your aha moment as a child or a t young adult? In as wine? a young adult is when I saw Trisha. <laughs> that was my ha ha moment in Burgundy. Uh, there she was. I was. I was in Burgundy. It was. I was. I was. It was so coincidental. And it's like, why aren't you in Napa? And, and I was coming out of the cellar. Well, let's have a toast to that. Let's have a toast to that. So the ha ha question is always so exciting because, for me, dear friends, it started very early. I got to make wine since birth. I got to be wine because my parents started in the living room of the family house and my bedroom was upstairs. I was obviously two, three years old. Started to walk and I was walking between barrels and, you know, battle for batonnage and all the accoutrement you need in a winery. And my parents received as they built the business together. My mother was a ballet dancer. My father was coming out of school and said, let's start a winery and get married. And they did, out of nowhere, with no money, just together. And it was a great experience because they received a lot at home. And in the 70s, you got to realize the world was very different. No alarm system, no key in your house. Peaceful world, phenomenal world, raised in Vougeot. So I was kind of a sommelier. They had my sister and I participate, even though it was customers or buyers or importers, we were there serving. And it was fun for us because we meet people, we only two of us, my parents and my sister and I. So I served the wine. So that one night, I was seven years old, hence JCB number seven, and my mother serves the main course, cheese, I serve all the wines, there's four wines in front of every guest. In 1947, or 1949, 1954, 1957. Four iconic vintages. I mean, you're talking Club about- Clos Bougeot? Well, Clos Bougeot, okay. Charles Chambertin, Musigny. Wonderful. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So, my mother doesn't drink much, but tastes, and is a very, very good taster, amazing palate. So, in those days, you use two of the rooms you have. You have dinner at the dinner table and then you retreat to the salon next to the fireplace and you have maybe dessert or coffee or cognacs and armagnacs. Mm -hmm. She doesn't finish her glasses. So I do. I'm there. Bad little boy. And I taste and I taste. And I did not like red wine at seven. You know, I like the whites and the bubbles. Mm -hmm. I could enjoy it. Mm. Citrus, orange peel, pineapple, grapefruit, pear, apple. You relate to it. Right. Very easy. Red wine, tannins, whatever. I tasted those wines, Trisha. I fell in love. I was so engaged in the wine, I finished every one of my mother's glasses. I was tipsy. My sister is a few years older, so she cleaned all the dishes. I went to my room, fell asleep my mother the next day and pretty severe upbringing Jean-Charles your sister did everything you didn't what happened oh I don't know I finally excuse whatever she said Jean-Charles maybe I know more her mother knows everything as you know eyes in the back of the head for sure and she says well did you enjoy the wine and I said what do you mean? She said, Jean-Charles, I know what happened, but did you enjoy the wine? He says, I said, I love them. And it changed my vision on red wine. And she says, I'm so pleased. I'm so excited. Make sure you try the wines again. <laughs> and it was an cool. iconic moment of my life. That's why when I crafted this wine with Brian Maloney, all about my mother, seductive, charismatic, and debonair, maybe more me debonair, but the idea of that Pinot that is sensual, elegant, what you have, refined, very sophisticated, made me think of that moment 
of trying those three different phenomenal wines. One of our wines was finished, the 57, but I got to try the 54, the 49, and 47, which was, can you imagine in the 70s, it was a 50-year-old wine, or 40-year-old wine, 35, whatever. But it was amazing. So to answer your question, it was older vintage, Burgundy. Most likely the Clos Rougeau and the Charme Chambertin were the two that Musini, of course, but harder to understand, maybe more intellectual. Mm -hmm. But the Clovougeau charm, you have the seduction of charm, you have the Clovougeau, the power and the charisma. That changed my life in terms of wine in general and red wine, Trisha specifically. And then I embarked into a journey where I was very curious. And by 10, 11 years old, I was doing pijage on open top for manor mm -hmm. that you've seen in our yes. place in Burgundy. I was doing really punch downs. I was really into it. And I love making Pinot because of the red wine characteristics. It's a white juice and the red skin. And if you have enough skin contacts, you create this beautiful, intense, rich color. Pourpre, velour, you know, those very orange, red, red, deep red. And it's like your beautiful dress, you know, you decided to go with a vibrant red and then with your watch, you went to another red color, orangey color. And that's the tone of red. It's a beautiful fire color. And I became in love with red wine. And that was in a long way, my epiphany moment. It was really what became for me the unique time where I said, I've never looked at red wine, it was like chocolate. Because as a young boy and child, you love chocolate. 68%. And in France, it was very sophisticated in the 70s on chocolate. You taste 78%, 64 milk chocolate, white chocolate, and the different percentage of cacao. Some not made with milks, just with water, and then obviously the butter of the cacao. And you really became an expert in chocolate, and I thought, God, chocolate and wine wouldn't be cool. And that's how really which I know I'm telling you a much longer story than you wanted to hear, but it's important to relate it to the curiosity that enlightened me was mirrored by chocolate, from chocolate to wine, and then I could not latch away from wine. And I became really passionate and blessed. And a pure curiosity at age seven. And not provoked by anyone, right. by my curiosity and me wanting to finish my mother's glass. And you know, the glass was right here, I was right there, and normally supposed to clean it. I did like the adult did. Smell, look, smell. And they were doing that, I put some on the table, obviously, but I knew how to taste a little bit already. And it was great because, Trisha, we were blending multi-generational in villages you would have the guy who works the iron, the wood, you have the baker. It's the scale from zero to 75, 80 years old of people, 90 years old, who would inspire you. You would go and see them in their shop, in their things, in their, what they did, and you became inspired. And that's the same with me, with wine. Well, it's a wonderful story. And you are the youngest aha uh, moment I've ever talked to, but Thank growing you. up in wine, that's, that's pretty special. Well, and maybe I have, um, you know, a great advantage because I was born in a winery of course. in the vineyards of Rougeau, which is, as you know, the pinnacle of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay too, with the Poulain Rougeau Blanc that you've tried. And I was very lucky because I had grandparents and parents who were very engaging and very much close to kids, allowing kids to try everything. Today, you know, you're a great mother, and obviously with two wonderful sons and grandmother, as you said now, who engage people to think, but my grandparents were great catalysts of asking you questions and seeing how you would answer them and pushing you to go besides what you knew and being curious. I think the highest sign of intelligence is curiosity. It's not just knowing, 
It's knowing that you want to know and it's being curious to want to know. Curiosity and critical thinking. And you're a scientist and you have a curious mind yourself. And that's, I think, what made me truthfully. Thereafter, what happened is my grandmother would take me to the garden that I did for her, with her, from the flowers to the orchard to the vegetables, right? All organic and biodynamically driven. And she would ask me, as you smell a wine at lunch or at dinner, which I always smell, what do you see? So she would draw on a page flower, fruit, vegetables, and any other elements I would think of. It could be a candy, it could be leather, it could be licorice, it could be vanilla, that I sense in the wine. And I was not allowed to put my lips into it unless I answered that the question. question. Wonderful. It could be cassis, blueberry, you know, cherry. Rio cherry. Indeed, it could be, you know, other things, white roses or begonia or lily in the valley. Here we go. Herbs. And she would do a pie chart like this, divided in four or five, depending on mood of six. And you would have to put it and then you would taste. But use your mind to think, what do you see? And I think that's essential in life is to engage all of ourselves into critical thinking and a thinking that questions the fait établi, yes. the existing format that we give them. Think out of the box. You have to teach your children to do that. So I'm going to thank John Charles for telling me about his aha moment, a very special one. Thank you. And to all the mothers, always inspiration to all your children, specifically your son, as you all know, ladies, as you are with your two boys. So to you, Trisha, for asking a great question. To you, John Trish. And for having enlightened your own children into being who they are today. Thank you. To yours. Okay, thank you.